The step response of a system is a common measure used to compare performance of two different systems. And so it's useful to be able to do quick approximations for step responses while you're doing a design. The step response is composed of two parts, the transient and the steady state. We're going to look at steady state first and then come back and review transient. In this course, we will only be considering linear systems, and so we know that the final response of a differential equation to a step input will be a constant output. We need to determine the value of that constant output. It can be done two ways, one using the differential form. So given a differential equation, x to the parentheses n is the nth derivative, x is the output, y is the input. I'm going to apply a step function, so y is a step at time infinity, which will be the final response. We know that the value of y to any derivative where n is greater than zero will be zero. This is a step function, so the derivative is zero because it's flat. We also know as time goes to infinity that the output of the system will follow the form of the input. This is because it's a linear differential equation. Therefore, xn, that is the derivatives of n for any n greater than zero, will also be zero. Therefore, we can look at the differential equation and we're left with a0x is equal to b0y. y is the step. Final value will be 1 as time goes to infinity. And so the output will be b0 over a0. We can also find the final value of a system using a transfer function form. We'll do that using the final value theorem for Laplace transforms. It states that the limit as time goes to infinity of f of t is equal to to the limit as s goes to zero of s times the Laplace transform of f. The other piece that we need is that the Laplace transform of a unit step is one over s. Now, given a system g of s, the input will be unit step one of s. I want to know what is the output as time goes to infinity. So I a final value theorem, that is, what is the limit as s goes to zero of s times one over s g of s. This is the system System, the step input and the plant limit of s times the function is part of the final value theorem, which just gives us the limit as s goes to zero of g of s. Let's look at a simple first order system. x dot plus 5x is equal to some forcing function, where the forcing function is the unit step. Using the differential form, we want to know what happens as time goes to infinity. Well, x dot goes to zero plus 5x. The unit step is one at time is equal to infinity. Therefore, x will have a final value of one fifth. We can also do this using transfer functions. The transfer function for the differential equation shown above is one over s plus 5. Apply step input. Take the limit as s goes to 0 of s times. Limit as s goes to 0, and we're left with 1 fifth. Here's another example. Let f be the unit step. What is the value as time goes to infinity? See, there's immediately a problem. The side is 0 is equal to 3. What happens if we do this with transfer functions? The transfer function is 1 over s squared plus 5s. Apply the step function, apply the final value theorem, put s is equal to 0, we get 1 over 0, which is infinite. And you can confirm this if you go ahead and do a simulation of the system. You'll find that the output looks something like this, where the system grows exponentially. That should make sense. If we look at the system, we can factor its s over s plus 5. The system has a pole at minus 5 and a pole at 0. A pole at 0 corresponds to an integrator. Integrator of a step function is a rem function, and that's what we get. So so when you do steady state step analysis, you need to decide if the system will even reach a steady state value by looking to see if there's an integrator in the system. The next step is to combine the final value, the steady state response, with the transient response. We've already done this, so I'm going to go over this quickly. And I should state up front that we are only trying to get an estimate or simple cases. If the system is complex or if we need an exact value, then in this class, we'll just go ahead and do a simulation using MATLAB. The factors we're going to consider when looking at transient response are damping ratio and settling time. We know from damping ratio and a second order system that a system with a damping ratio of 0.7 has a response something like this. System with a damping ratio of 1, a system with the damping of 0.5 looks something like that. The smaller the damping, the more the oscillation. 
Then combine that with our knowledge of settling time and we can get a quick approximation of a step response. Let's look at some examples. Given the plant 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 4, let's draw an approximation to this step response. First, what's the damping ratio for the system? Well, if we put this in standard form, this is s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. And you can see right away, omega n is equal to 2, zeta is equal to 0.5. We also should check the final value. So the limit as s goes to 0 of 1 over s times s, that takes care of the step, and the s in the final value theorem of 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 4 equal to 1 fourth. Finally, we need to know the settling time of the system. Here's a quick shortcut for finding the settling time for a second order system. If we look at a second order system that oscillates, it has poles like this. This value right here is zeta omega n. And this length is omega n square root of 1 minus zeta squared. This right here is related to settling time. So we can look at our system and see right away that zeta omega n is 1. Therefore, settling time is equal to 4 over 1 one for about four seconds. Combine this information and I would approximate the time domain response for a step input to look like this. One, two, three, four. Final value will be one fourth. There's the step input. Final value will be here. It'll die out about here. Get the damping ratio of 0.5. That means the step response for the system is going to look something like this. This is just an estimate. I'm only trying to characterize the response of the system. I don't know the height of the overshoot. You can go to the book and they have formulas for certain systems where you can calculate the overshoot height. I don't know the exact form of the ringing, and that's all okay, because I'm only trying to characterize the response. If we want a detailed response in this class, we'll go ahead and do a full simulation. This system has two real poles, one at minus 5 and one at minus 6. The system doesn't oscillate. First, let's find the settling time. Well, there's two poles here, so we're going to have one pole that settles out at 4 fifths and one pole that settles out at 4 sixths of a second. The total solution will be the combination of those two poles. The second thing we want to look at damping ratio. In this case, there is no damping ratio. The system doesn't oscillate. And finally, we need the final value. So let's take the limit as s goes to 0 of 10 over s plus 5, s plus 6. And that is, those go to 0, 10 over 30, 1 third. Now I can approximate the plot. The system looks about like this. Somewhere around 8 tenths of a second, the system dies out. So if this is 1 here. This height is 1 third. I know there's no oscillation. So the system does something like that. Here I've chosen a system that's a little more complex just to emphasize that it's not easy to come up with the exact step response just using these approximations. This system has a 0 at minus 1, a pole at minus 5, and a pole at minus 6. Again, the settling time is going to be related to those two poles, and so we have one at 4 fifths of a second and one at 4 sixths of a second. There's also a 0, which is going to affect the output. Get to that later. Next, we have the steady state, the final value. So the limit as s goes to 0 of s plus 1 over s plus 5 s plus 6, 0, 0, 0, 1 30th is the height. So if I plot the response, I know that somewhere out here at around 0.8 seconds, the system will die out. And I know that the final value will be about 1 30th. But I don't know what's going to happen in between. It's tempting just to draw the same curve that we did before. The difference, however, is this 0. And you can see that the 0 affects the inputs. If we were to write the differential equation for this, we would have x double dot plus 11x plus dot plus 30x is equal to f dot plus f. The transient response, we must consider the derivative of f. In this case, we have the derivative with respect to time of a unit step. That is equal to an impulse. That is, it goes to infinity at time is equal to zero and then zero for all other times. We're putting that into the system. And so the final response will have some sort of pulse at the beginning. The system does something like this. Because of this initial pulse, 
due to the derivative in the numerator. And the location of this zero actually tells you how much influence that has. The slower the zero, the more influence it has. The faster the zero, the less influence it has. So if this zero was way out here at say minus 100, this little bump right here would be very small. What I've shown here is a simple way to approximate step responses for systems. If you need a better approximation than what you can accomplish here, you should just go ahead and simulate the system in MATLAB.